Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we are testing out some new products from Guerlain. I am so excited about these. I have the new Para Gold Skin Matte Foundation. It's transfer proof, high perfection, 24 hour care and wear, and it is infused with 24 karat gold and white peony. Sounds very fancy and luxurious. I also picked up the new Terracotta Concealer. So this is the Natural Perfection Concealer. Again, 24 hour wear, transfer proof, and it's made from 95% naturally derived ingredients. I've heard great things about both of these. And you'll have to forgive me, I did sort of cheat on my no buy, but I had a Nordy Note and a Bloomingdale's Loyalist card that was going to expire. So I think in total, I only spent about $25 on both of these products. I have nearly a full face of new products to try today because a few brands sent me packages this week, so I figured we would try everything at the same time. Hopefully we'll be able to come up with something really pretty, so I'm just getting ready for the day while I share my thoughts. I'm really trying to keep my expectations in check because I usually love Guerlain foundations. One of my previous Holy Grail foundations was Guerlain, the L'Essential or the Perfection Matte Foundation. This one is an elevated version and it contains skincare and of course the 24 karat gold. I was not sure what shade I should choose based on the website swatches. I went with 3N. I believe that's what I've used in the past. Maybe I used 2.5N. I'm not sure. So hopefully this works. I just took it out of the box. I did sunless tan my face. I used my Dior sunless tanner last night or the night before. We're just going to make it work. It might be a little bit too dark, but let's see. I'm going to start with one full pump. Ooh. One and a half. <laughs> that first one was a half pump. I like that it has the expiration date listed right on the bottle. Not all foundations do that. It's nice to have it easily listed so that you can find it. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel for clean makeup brushes. So I pulled out my La Mer brush and I'm gonna use this to blend. It's so one thing that is on my list to do this weekend is to clean all of my makeup brushes. It's always such a big undertaking because I like to wait until they're all dirty and then clean them all at once. So it's usually a job that takes a few hours. Wow. I think the color will be okay for today. It might be a little dark. I have sunless tanner on my body. It's not fresh. If I did another coat, maybe it would work. But if this oxidizes much more, that's gonna be way too dark. I probably should have gone with 2.5. Dang. I love how thin it is on this cheek. It blended out beautifully. It looks so natural. Not really drying matte, but definitely a natural, more matte skin-like finish, I would say. And see, I still have a little light reflection. It just looks like skin, but it evened everything out. I mean, it covered the redness. That's what I loved so much about the L'Essential Matte Foundation is that it evened out the complexion and it looked really natural and it also lasted really nicely. No, I think this foundation is a little bit too dark. I'm so sad. I'm gonna try my best to save it, but I definitely should have gone with the lighter shade. I remember being really confused because I could have sworn I used 3N in the past, but then the swatch looked really dark. And I guess this is what happens when you order online instead of just going to the store. Now that I've blended it down my neck, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look distracting. I can still see some freckles and imperfections. If I wanted to, I could probably build up the coverage a little bit in the areas that I need it. I'm not gonna worry about that today. I have nowhere to be. <laughs> I'm not trying to impress anybody. What strikes me the most, I think what I love most about the foundation so far is the finish. I really want this makeup to look the best it can possibly look, so we're gonna skip ahead to eyes for a moment. That way I can use the concealer to clean up everything later on. I have these new liquid eyeshadows from Lancome. These were sent to me complimentary. This is the new Edel Tint Liquid Eye Blusher. The name is a little bit confusing because they do have at least one shade that kind of looks like it could be a blush, but it's a liquid eye. I've been on a cream eyeshadow kick for the last few months. I don't think it's going to let up anytime soon. I just love the ease and convenience of a cream or liquid eyeshadow product. So this could easily make it into my everyday routine. I'm gonna start by swatching these three shades. This is 01. This is 02. And this is 03. 01, 02, 
O3. I'm gonna start with shade O2. This is the kind of taupey shimmering shade. And I'm just going to apply that to the lid. I like the applicator. It seems like a flat paddle brush. With a flat brush, I'm just going to tap that around. It looks like it might be a bit patchy. Let me try a second coat. I think it started to lift the foundation underneath. I'm trying to carefully tap with the brush. That way I don't move anything around too much. Maybe you have to let it dry down too before you open your eye. I just don't want it to crease. I definitely really like the color, so I'm gonna try the same thing on the other side. This time I'm going to tap it out with my finger just to see if it makes a difference. I'm trying to test which application technique is best. Sometimes finger is just the best way to apply a product. There's really no way around it. I have seen brushes that are meant to mimic a finger. They look so weird. I've seen them online. I don't think they're that popular. I want to match the same amount, so I'm applying a little bit more. Again, I want to try to let that dry as much as possible before I open my eye. The difference is really subtle between the two sides, but the side that I blended with a brush looks a little bit thicker and a little patchier. Doesn't look bad, but I would say the side that I blended with my finger looks the best. I don't wanna mess it up, but I do wanna experiment a little bit. So I'm going to dab just a little bit of this shade three. This is the rich chocolate on the back of my hand. This I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up with the brush and see if that helps. And just sort of melt that into the taupe. See, that worked really nicely as well. So that's another option. You can always pick it up with the brush instead of just trying to blend it out with the brush after you've applied it to the skin. With the deeper colors, I think this might be the best application technique. Wow, okay, I like that. And see, this is why I wanted to wait to do concealer because I'll be able to clean up that edge really easily. You still want to work quickly, but picking it up with the brush first definitely helps to diffuse the product. Same thing on the other side. I feel like with liquids, not as much cream, but definitely with liquid products, there tends to be a bit of a learning curve. It's not that they're problematic or tricky or hard to work with. You just have to figure out what works best for you, what technique you like best. I'm almost done playing around with these, but we have to see what the gold looks like. I'm gonna pop this in the inner corner. I picked up just a little product on a precision brush, and I am just gonna pop that right in the tear duct inner corner area. I actually think I like this technique as well. Just go ahead and pick it up with a brush first. The gold is also really pretty. I could imagine this all over the lid. I really need some brightness to help balance out the face, so the one product that can hopefully save us is this concealer, the Terracotta Concealer. I like that this is a glass tube. It feels very heavy and luxurious, and I went with shade 0N. I usually go for the lightest shade because even the very lightest shade, once it oxidizes, it, it just works for me. I've never, I don't know if I've ever tried a concealer that I thought that was way too light. Maybe the Huda Beauty, but I would say that's probably it. I'm so sad the foundation is too dark. I definitely did myself dirty with that shade selection. I'm not sure if I should try to exchange it. I probably could, but I also would hate for this foundation to just sit in the drawer because I know it's too dark for me. So I'll probably need to exchange it. I, I'm not sure I can make this work. Let's see. I want to feel the texture, so I'm going to start by blending this out with my finger. I really like the consistency. It feels light. It doesn't feel really thick and goopy. It feels pretty natural. I'm going to use a brush on this side just to see. We'll see if there's a difference. So far, I've heard really great things about the foundation. I'm not sure if I've really heard much chatter about this concealer yet. So if you like it, if you've tried it, 
let me know your thoughts and opinions. I'm gonna use the brush to help clean up my little wing. I'm gonna let this sit for a moment, then I'm gonna spritz my face with setting spray and continue to blend. I'm using a Pro Foundation 47 brush. This is a Sephora Pro, Sephora Collection Pro brush to keep blending this out. It looks really good right now. It looks very smooth. I like how the foundation and the concealer are blending together. I will say before I blended it out, I did have tiny creasing right beneath the eye. Pretty normal, so I'm not going to hold that against the concealer yet, but just wanted to at least point that out. I feel like this is a concealer that I would want to set with powder. I would have to set with powder. The color looks good. The coverage looks really nice. Of course, with concealer, the true test is how it wears throughout the day. So I'm going to tell you how I feel about it right now, but I'm going to have to wear it a couple days before I can give you my full review. Before I set with powder, I have a cream bronzer here to try. I'm actually not sure if this is a cream bronzer. I think it is. It's from Rodeal, Rodile. They sent me a couple products and this is their bronze glow lighter. It's a liquid glow and then it says bronze and glow. But I tried this on the back of my hand and it looks very bronze. So this is not going to be a highlighter on me. I feel like the better use of this would be to treat it like the Hollywood Flawless Filter and see if it adds a little color. Not that we need more bronze. <laughs> I'm already pretty tan because of the foundation, but let's see what this is like. Oh, you know what? I love that because it's kind of sheer. But it looks really natural. You can see it has some color to it. Then as you blend it out, because it's a sheer liquid, it blends so easily. Wow. I like that a lot. I like how portable it is as well. And the shade seems pretty good. I just like how sheer it is. It makes blending so effortless. Oh my gosh, I like it. I'm excited to run my errands and then come home and make dinner because we have the Love is Blind season six reunion to watch. It is season six, right? Or is it season seven? We binged watch this past week, the entire season. And I've avoided all of the spoilers for the reunion, but I cannot wait. That is my guilty pleasure. And this season was kind of crazy. I, I think the show has gone downhill since the first season, but I can't help myself. And there's like nothing else to watch. I have another new product here from Rodeal. It's the glass powder, loose setting powder. And I did take the little plastic top off just because I wanted to see if glass powder meant glass skin, if those two things were related at all. I, I didn't want to use it if I thought it was going to be shimmery. And it appears to be very matte. So hopefully this will be a really nice, soft, but matte setting powder for the under eye. I was surprised when they reached out and offered to send me a couple things. And usually I turn down PR. I just have too much at the moment. I'm turning away packages. I don't need any more. I need less. I don't know much about the brand, so I was more receptive and I'm glad because of the products they sent over, they're more unique. Ooh, very finely milled. It just sort of disappeared. I like the powder so far. It's very light, which is perfect. I don't know what makes it glass or why it's called glass powder. To me, this looks pretty flat matte but it's not heavy at all. It is so light and so finely milled. It just sort of blurred the under eye over here. 
and the skin still feels really soft and supple and hydrated, which I like. Anytime I see a little concealer creasing right below my eye, I always like to tap it out with my fingers before I set with powder. You want to make sure to pick up any excess product, that way it's not a recurring issue. I like it a lot. Ooh. Okay, this I also have to wear for longer than two seconds. I need to wear it throughout the day. But what I'm seeing, I really like. When I look close up, it looks so natural. I know I set with powder, but it doesn't look the way my skin normally looks after setting it with powder. And it's so rare that I use a powder that is so different from everything else that I have, but this is different. I'm gonna set my T-zone. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <coughs> I breathed it in. <laughs> oh no. The powder has the potential to be my favorite thing that I tried today. Simply because I can't get away with not using powder. So if I find a powder that looks really natural, I'm always really excited. This is the new coral blush. Rose Coquillage Powder Blush Duo from the Spring Collection. I'm just gonna swirl the shades together. I think it would be somewhat pointless to try to concentrate on the peach side. And the rose is really pretty too, so I'm just gonna swirl. I'm so excited about what's coming next from Chanel. I know we just received spring, so we need to enjoy it, take a deep breath, use it more than a handful of times. But I did see the stories from Ali Andrea recently. She attended a Chanel beauty event and she was posting some behind the scenes or sneak peeks, I should say, of the event. And oh my goodness, took my breath away. I cannot wait for what's coming. I'm assuming it's gonna be the summer collection. She said sometime in May, so we'll see. I'm excited for the single eyeshadow. I really like the lavender color. Now the mascara, I could probably leave. I'm just not in the market for a lavender mascara, but at least it's something different and unique. I'm sure somebody will really like it. I'm gonna start finishing the eye. I'm going back into our Lancome Liquid Shadow. This is shade two, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply this directly under the eye. And I'm being careful just to tap. I don't wanna pick up any of the complexion products. I don't wanna disturb the concealer right beneath the eye. I don't have a new highlighter, but I'm almost done with this Westman Atelier Peau de Rose. Even though I'm not sure it's going to be the best shade for this look, I'm just going to apply a little bit of this on the tops of the cheeks just to give us a little extra glow. I am so excited to almost be done with this. It's taken me years to finish this. Makes me happy though that I got my money's worth. I wanna say I picked this up during one of the Sephora savings events. Might have been the spring savings event, 2022. I quickly finished the eyes with a little liquid eyeliner on top, mascara, I curled my lashes the whole bit. And the last step is lips. Since I introduced the Nuit Blanche lipsticks, but I didn't really swatch them, I'm gonna go ahead and apply zero o'clock. Zero, 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 zero. This is the Rouge Allure Velvet Lipstick, the Nuit Blanche from Chanel. This red is so beautiful. And I did create a reel the other day where I swatched all three shades that I picked up. I think they're really nice. Even for matte lipsticks or velvet, they really do not feel like mattes whatsoever. I'm going in first with my lip liner. This is the Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner in 11. It's cherry. E. It is such a vibrant color. It feels creamy. It really does feel like a creamy lipstick. Once it dries down though, it does kind of set in place, but even then it still feels really comfortable. So I'm a big fan of this shade, the 0000. I guess this is sort of like the classic midnight. And I think it goes really nicely with the eyes. I did mess up because I applied that long comb liquid shadow beneath the lower lash line. And I don't think that's the best place for it. On top of the lid, it's fine, but I did sort of unintentionally mess it up by applying that liquid. The color is so pretty, I was hoping it would work, but it just looks sort of 
paint-like, as if I dragged paint across the lower lash line and then it dried too quickly. So it doesn't really look soft and diffused the way I typically like my under eye to look. I even tried to fix it with a little brown eyeshadow. I did my best. Lesson learned. That's what happens when you experiment and play around with products for the first time. I don't think it ruined the makeup overall, but next time I know if I use the Lancome liquid shadows, I'm gonna blend it out with my finger. I'm just gonna tap a little bit on the lid. I think less is more, and then that's it. I'm not going to apply beneath the lower lash line. We made it to the very end, and this is the final makeup look. I did touch up my face a little bit. I added a pop of highlight to the inner corner of the eye. I very boldly took a makeup wipe and tried to remove the liquid shadow beneath my lash line. Quickly realized that I was about to mess up the entire makeup look, so I stopped myself. And then I touched up my brows a little bit, that's basically it. But I do feel like just those little tweaks at the end sometimes make a huge difference overall. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I am so impressed with a lot of these new products. Of course, we have to talk about the new Guerlain Complexion products. I really like this foundation. I am so mad at myself because as much as I was able to make it work, I don't think this is the ideal foundation shade for me. I should have gone a little bit lighter. It's a shame because now that I've opened it and used it, it would just be a waste. So maybe I will just force myself to use it. It doesn't look bad right now, but I'll probably need to use this over the summer when I'm really sunless tan. And then the concealer I think I like so far. I did notice a little creasing ben below my eye. Nothing terrible. I think it looks really natural. It's certainly not the most full coverage concealer I own, but I don't need full coverage every single day. So I think this is really nice. I'm gonna have to see how it wears, but initial impression after having it on for maybe a little over an hour is that I do really like it. But the foundation, I love. A few other standouts today that really took me by surprise are these two products from Rodeal, this bronze glow lighter, liquid glow, bronze and glow. There's a lot of words, I'm not sure the exact name. It's so beautiful. I really like the shade. I like the texture. I like that it's really light and sheer and it's a liquid, but it's a bronzer and it comes in this perfect little tube with the doe foot. So if you want it to be really precise with your application, it's very easy to do so. Similar to the Hollywood Flawless Filter, I had been using shade 6.5 as a bronzer and I thought it looked so flawless. This is exactly the same, except I actually think this shade might be a little bit better. It's not as warm. And then this setting powder. This setting powder is kind of blowing me away, the glass powder. This is really beautiful. It's so finely milled. It's really translucent. I'm not usually blown away by a loose powder. I think for the most part, a powder is a powder, but this is really good. This is not going to get dumped into the giant Chanel powder tub. I wanna keep this separate. This is special. I'm gonna keep using this. This is going straight to the top drawer. I'm gonna use this over the next few days and I will report back if I still think it looks really incredible after a few weeks, but I'm impressed because it does not look like powder at all on the skin. And it seems to be doing a good job keeping my face matte. Sometimes I use a powder and I think it looks really great and flawless, but then after maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, not that long, I feel like I need to add a little more and then a little more and a little more. And I have to keep powdering my face so I just layer more and more product because it's maybe a little bit too sheer. That doesn't seem to be the case with this. It seems like you can use a little bit and it still sets everything in place without looking really dry. These Edol Tint Liquid Shadows from Lancome are really pretty. I love the shade selection. The gold is really nice. The taupey shade we used is really pretty. I like this rich chocolate shade as well. I'm not sure if they're so different from other liquid shadows I've tried, although I've had it on for a while now and it is not creasing at all. It doesn't look like it's budging. Of course, if you have oily lids, I think sometimes you have to be really careful. I don't really have super oily lids, but I don't have the opportunity to thoroughly road test this eyeshadow today. So that is something that I will do in the future. Right now, it looks like it's not gonna budge at all. And the lipstick is a winner. I love wearing a red lipstick. I wish I was one of those cool French girls and I wore red every single day. 
I aspire to be like that. I want to get more use out of my reds. It seems like a waste to save them for just the holiday season. But I think this shade is beautiful. It is the perfect universal red midnight. Zero, 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 zero. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for getting ready with me and listening to me talk about these new products. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm really curious if you've tried any of these products. Even if you've tried anything new, if it's been exciting, if you've really enjoyed it, let me know down below in the comments section. I'm starting to think about the end of the no buy. So I wanna know what should go on my wish list that isn't there already. So keep me posted if there's anything new and exciting that you've tried or added to your makeup collection. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.